The NZX's first ever investment fund designed to trade carbon credits will be listed today. Its aim to give Kiwis the chance to offset their carbon footprint and invest in it. But will this actually help tackle the issue of climate change? For more, we're joined by Paul Harrison, Managing Director of Salt Funds. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. So can you just explain how carbon trading works? So as an emitter, you're required in our New Zealand Emissions Trading Scheme to come in and you have to purchase the right to emit. So effectively, as Justin Trudeau calls it, right to pollute. And then you, you have to buy those credits in a marketplace. Now, the government will al allocate credits to the people that absorb the, that uh, CO2 emissions and generally in New Zealand it's the forestry people. So the forestry guys get a credit and they'll put that out into the market and then the emitters come along and they pay a price for that. And the idea is that the market can put a right, the right price on pollution and the right price on that damage. So, and, and it also creates an incentive for the forestry guys. You get a higher price for your credit, you'll plant more trees, the emitters probably don't want to emit as much anymore and they also find that the, they'll go looking for clean tech solutions as well. Will, uh, will all this trading happen within New Zealand or can you trade with the international credits as well? We used to be able to bring international credits in and that was a problem because we ended up with a whole bunch of what well, were essentially fake units and it drove the price down. People stopped planting trees and the emissions just carried on. We haven't cut our emissions at all since we, we signed up to Paris and, and that's going to be a big problem for us financially down the road as taxpayers and I also think is, is in terms of the climate as well. Uh you just mentioned that we haven't cut our emissions at all and the emissions trading scheme has been around for 10 years now in New Zealand. Yeah. So how can we be sure it's actually going to work? Because we haven't had a decent price on carbon. I think the bringing the fake ones in it put the price down. The carbon price is now back up to $25 and it's actually only now we're seeing companies really start to talk about decarbonisation. Um, the OECD is talking about 30 euros for, for a decent change in, in behaviour. You're trying to change behaviour here and it needs to be, you need to have that carrot and that stick to get people to change. Do we have a cap on how much a credit can be worth? No, oh, we do at the moment. We have a $25 cap and so well, you have a fixed price option and, and that's the problem really. So it means that you're transferring that liability from the emitter to the taxpayer and Treasury's estimated if we continue to do this it could be about, we could be paying $30 billion at the end of this 2030 period. Because doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of a market? That's right. Trying to change things? Yep. Yeah, it's for sure. I mean, and it's interesting, um, Contact Energy reported the other day, they were talking about to get them to invest in new generation, they need to see more like a $75 uh, carbon credit price in New Zealand. So. Some of our viewers out there might think that a better way to tackle climate change is actually a carbon tax, where we're just directly charging polluters or emitters. I think in some ways that they end up with the same thing, except I think the carbon emission trading scheme allows you to be far more efficient because it doesn't try and pick winners and it doesn't try and um, distort things. It doesn't, it's not the government saying you must close this and you must do that. So if you're emitting, you need to change. If you're, if you're a consumer, you need to adjust your, your purchasing. And I, I just think that it's far more efficient in terms of the incentive side of it as well, because otherwise the government's got to find where to put that money. You just mentioned um, picking winners. Yeah. Would the agricultural industry be a winner in the world this because they aren't included yeah. in the trading scheme? I think if you look at our emissions, you know, we're emitting about 80 million tonnes a year. We're about 20 million tonnes a year too much. Um, half of our emissions come from agriculture. I think agriculture has to come into it in some form or another. That recent report from the IPC, which was talking about a one and a half degree temperature change is just as bad. That could be on top of us in 2030. So we need to do some changes now. We need to start thinking about this now. How will that change the carbon market if, the, if agriculture is just suddenly brought in? Oh, I think there will obviously increase demand for it. The government's also um, looking at reducing the free ones it gives to some of the emitters already. Um, I, I just think that um, maybe there, there's all issues around um, forestry as well in terms of how much credits they're getting. I think you might, if they got, if agriculture got brought in, I think you might see the forestry guys get a little bit more credit. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Paul Harrison You're from welcome. Salt Funds. Thanks, thanks very much.